to <coughs> make the right choice and even sometimes to see what people, other people cannot see. And my mom used to say better to lose my arms rather than my sight. And I've got friends who have told me better to lose everything but not my sight. And one verse in the Bible, I think it's, uh, it's in 2 Corinthians, says that it's better to walk by faith rather than by sight. Meaning that faith can see what eyes cannot see. Mm. Faith can show to you the right place where you can step while your eyes does, don't have even any idea. And today we are going to talk about uh, something basic to help myself and to help you too in order to prepare for the return of Jesus Christ. Recently in the world, we have been seeing people pro protesting almost everywhere. Why do people protest? It's because Something's wrong somewhere. I was watching TV just a few days ago, and I think it was in America, then somewhere else around the world. People are saying black uh, color or black uh, thing does not matter. <laughs> black doesn't matter, I don't know. And black people believe that, you know, maybe other colors are against us. And in order, to show our anger, to show our uh, disappointment with the systems that exist, we have to protest. And when the people talk about protesting, they walk very often. People walk. You step out from your house and you start to walk towards a destination. <coughs> And that pushed me to think, why don't we also protest against Satan? Imagine if all Christians could stand and tell God we are protesting against evil in this world. We are protesting against Satan. We are protesting against sin. How strong could be the church or the word of God? We can protest because they killed one man, because of his color or whatever, we don't really know. Maybe that was a path that God made for him to go through. Because God has got different ways to take people away from the world. Some will die. They can be good swimmers, they will die in the sea. Some can be good pilots. While they are piloting, they will crash and die. Some people, they can also die in a car crash or even in their bed sleeping. It's just a path that God use, uses to take us back to his kingdom. We have got coronavirus actually. How many people have protested against coronavirus? None. Sorry? None. None. And coronavirus has been killing millions. Why can't we stand and say we are protesting against this sickness? Why can't maybe scientists, Christians, Muslims, all religions can say, no, this sickness has been killing millions of people. We should do the right protests. Why don't you protest with it? Why not? Because maybe people don't even know where to go to protest for that issue or who we should go to talk to about this issue. Therefore, coronavirus continues to kill. And we are trying to find the remedy from a science and all of that, which is really good. I'm giving to you these examples before I start because sometimes in life, we don't really focus on what is very important. And the things which are very small in size, we make them bigger and we protest against them. 
I should start to learn how to protest against sin. Mm -hmm. When I'm going somewhere and I face sin coming, should I really pick up my flag, which is my Bible, mm -hmm. and tell a uh, Satan, I'm protesting against you. I'm protesting against the sin, your temptation and whatever. Yes, I should do so. And I should not wait for many other people to join me to start a protest. A protest can start only with one person. Unlikely. Many of us, when some people are protesting, their job is to help. I've seen people, even when the guy was killed by the police, you know, and others, people were just taking images. No help. Taking images only. So when other brothers, sisters, are dying in sin, what do we do? I've seen a video. This man wanted to, to learn how to, to swim. He didn't know how to swim. And he jumped into water. He was drunk. And someone was a filmer, you know, was recording how he was dying. And the guy was jumping up and down, trying to shout for help. And for me, it was like, you know, I'm just to film and spread this all over the world. Luckily, someone intervened to save his life. Then the man was like, oh, I thought it was a joke. I couldn't believe that it was that serious. Very often, when we sin, we think it's just funny. We think it's not serious. And sometimes, even we share our sins with people on what I would call maybe a spiritual network. If I want to gossip, I'm creating a network, I will talk to people about against someone else. You know? I will spread that news. I can have my Facebook of sin where I will tell people about, you know, bad things or wrong things, where I will defend evil rather than the word of God. So let us read in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 15 to 17. You can read it from us. I've got a French Bible, sorry. Five fifteen to seventeen. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Amen. Think of all the ways that you live. Because the times that you are living actually is a serious time. This is the word of God. According to God, this is the time where <clears throat> everybody should be awake or awakened. And know that, you know, very soon, very, very soon, Jesus Christ is coming back. This is a time where Satan himself doesn't hide himself anymore, but he stands up and try to destroy as many as souls he can. It's a time where sin can be now seen by our eyes like it's something normal. <coughs> it's a time where people are not afraid anymore to do what you call wrongdoing in front of others. It's a time where Satan has removed shame, has removed respect, has removed almost everything which can make you to be a very good citizen of the kingdom of God. And we all look just foolish. What people could not do 10 years ago, today they can easily do it in front of everyone, and people close their eyes. So we are living in a dangerous time, moment where Every human being who is, I mean, actually alive, should know that uh, 
I have to be really, really careful. It's time maybe to go for a confinement where you have to protect yourself, protect your family, protect your soul, protect your children against the influence of the world. Because Jesus is just at the doorstep. And during this time, God continued to insist, do not be foolish. Do not be foolish. You have got the brain that I give to you. You are intelligent. You have the capacities of deciding what is wrong to what is right. Please, as children of mine, God is telling us, do not make yourself to become foolish. Sometimes, people will decide to put their dignity aside and to act foolishly. Yesterday I was at Oscars because we lost one uh, brother of the family. As we were eating, the phone rang. The Oscar picked up the phone. He left his plate there with a you know, very nice piece of uh, fish. And I chose, that was my choice. When we want to collect food, I chose the head of the fish. He chose the nice part, which was really, you know, wow. When I came, I started to eat, I found that the head had nothing on it. It was just a bone. So what I did, because Oscar was distracted on the phone, I took his fish and I ate it. I took that head of the fish, I put it on his plate. When he came back, I think Henry was there. What was Oscar's impression? <laughs> it was hilarious. It's like, he gets his plate and he's like, It's not my plate. <laughs> exactly. I was laughing so much, I was crying. He denied the plate wasn't his. <laughs> the food looked the same, the rest of the food looked the same, but except for that head of fish which was there on his plate. And he was like, you know, he lost control somehow. And I, I will tell you that whenever you put your them. faith somewhere aside, to join something which will distract you, don't be shocked when you come back to your Bible mm -hmm. or to your belief, you'll find that things have changed. Mm -hmm. You can be in a very good time, you know, where you are fervent in praying. Stop to pray for two days or three days, you see the difference. If you read your Bible every time, just stop for five days, to come back to become an issue, you start to find it hard. The same as if you learn you know, how to chat on the phone, you grow up in that way, and sometimes it will even become harder to put your phone aside and to do other things. And in my house, actually we have, gone, we have been going through a serious problem, where Nadesh can be online up to 4 a.m. Talking to people, chatting, talking to, of course she's helping people. She's teaching them a few things about life and all of that, which is not good for herself to rest and sleep, you know. But it's also good because she's trying to bring people back to the right path. And I've been telling her this might be a distraction because you have to know how to do uh, the repetition of your time. This time I'll do that, this time I'll do this. And sometimes, it can even reach 3 p.m. Because she has been talking, you find out coming out from my room, have you eaten? No, have you had your shower? No, have you? Oh. How come? Because there's something has you know, taken her in a different direction. This will take me to tell you about uh, now my subject today, which is a question that I'll ask you. What is a spotlight? Not even spotlight, I should take it maybe like a, a blind spot. That would be right. Blind spot. What is a blind spot of your life? A spot. Sp spot. Spot. <laughs> blind spot. <laughs> English is terrible. <laughs> blind spot of your life. Do you have one 
or not. Like a blind spot. When you're driving, uh, let me then use that example. You are in your car, you are a good driver. You have got your driver's license, which can be maybe a full license or learners or anything else. You know very well all the roads around you. All the, I mean, behind your wheel, suddenly something happened and you didn't see it. You didn't see it. And two seconds, maybe, or at two meters away from your car, what would you do? Some people will scream while well, the car is moving forward. Other people, yeah, will freeze. Other people maybe will, I don't know. People might have different reactions. And I've seen also people will slam their brakes to avoid an accident. A blind spot is not something that I would say you don't have a sight. No, you can see, but there is just say, something which blocks you for not seeing what is coming. And then this we can find it in different places of our lives. Because whenever a blind spot is there, it's a threat not only to the driver, but also passengers and other people maybe who are crossing, or other road users. One time I was driving, and the bus was on the other side, you know? I'm here, and the bus is here. And because the bus stopped, I said, let me continue. And someone was just in front of the bus, he wanted to cross the road on the other side. And I screamed to Jesus. Luckily, the person stopped. I stopped too, so it wasn't an accident. A tree can be there, which can be a blind stop of yours. Even your car itself can create a blind spot where you can't even see. And many people, according to what I've seen, by biking up, they will tell us you have to be careful. Imagine your eyes are looking there. They will give you a small mirror there to look what is at the back. But something can be behind and you can't see it. What do you do when you are backing up your car? When you are backing up your vehicle, what do you do first? According to the Roads Code of New Zealand, you have to check. How often do you check your life when you decide to reverse spiritually? Or when you decide to say, look, I'm not taking this direction of my spiritual life. I'm regressing spiritually. Do you really, have you, oh wait, I mean, have you, have you done any time of, uh, have you done any exam or test of asking yourself, in case I pull out or I reverse in my spiritual life, I can kill someone or I can destroy something. When I say that I don't want to pray anymore, for instance, what are the consequences? Because I'm like a car which is reversing. I want to go backward. What will happen? When I decide that I do not want to read my Bible every morning, because I want to take a new direction, what will happen? You've never seen any driver on this planet reversing a vehicle without having a plan to move forward taking a very different direction. If you see someone reversing the car, it means that I will turn left or right or go somewhere else. So when you reverse in your faith, what is your next destination? And that's the first problem of not seeing when you reverse what is behind you, what you can kill in your life. But very often you kill with what you call the fruit of the spirit. When you decide to reverse the spirit, you kill some of those fruit of spirit. I will give you an example. A child who does not steal and decide to steal, you know, the child knows that I cannot steal it. 
wrong, it's bad, it's a sin. But somehow they decide to stay. When you come to that child and ask the child, who took what I left here? What will be the answer? Yeah. Lie. The first thing will be that person will kill what you call the truth. They will destroy it in order to try to defend their sin. And they may take a new direction to go somewhere else, giving to you justifications or accusing other children. It's not me. I wasn't there. Only Rebecca was there. It wasn't me. I've seen it, but I didn't touch it. They don't see exactly where they are going. But if you sit in your vehicle and your vehicle has got that little camera, reverse camera, you may stop and see, oh, something is at the back. Because you have got something there which shows you behind where your eyes cannot see. What tool do you use when you are making your spiritual decisions? Maybe of going to church, maybe of praying, maybe of reading the Bible, maybe of calling even people, talking to them, maybe also of forgiving, maybe of helping others. How often have I said in my life, from now and on, I will share the gospel with at least one person per week, and I end up not doing it. Then it's like, oh Lord, you know, this is hard. Please, Lord, understand. I step back. By stepping back, how many people have lost the opportunity to know Christ because of my weakness? Because when you give a promise to God, you promise to God I will do this, it's a task that we agree to take. And he assigns that task to us. When we don't do it, then many people miss. They miss out. And do not be foolish to believe that, okay, it's gone like that because I couldn't do it anyway. Who cares? No. It's like, as I said, coronavirus can be here or exist, and we can't protest against it. Why can't I protest against my way of making decisions that I will never fulfill? Why don't I protest against my way of giving to God those false promises and telling myself from now on I have to be honest with not only with me of myself but also with God and others. There is another way that I've seen on the motorway. People are driving and you see someone changing lanes. Left, right, left, right. <laughs> and they are so dangerous. <laughs> And you can hear even sometimes other road users, they will stop their vehicles because the vehicle just, you know, change the land without indicating. And they are there in front of them. While we are driving at a speed of 100 kilometers an hour. How often do we also change <coughs> our land? God has put something in front of us. This is a path that you should follow. But we don't remain in faith. We move sometimes in the fruit of the, you know, the flesh. We come back to the fruit of the spirit. Some other times we are like, oh, we don't even know if it's right or not. But anyway, I will do it. We are shifting from left to right and we become a stumbling block for others. When you move from your faith to do something stupid, those who are behind you or those who are next to you, you create, you become a danger for them. And this happens, happens every time. Young persons, old persons, will just decide to change their mind. Because we believe by changing the line, we will reach wherever we are going fast. And why am I saying that? I'm sure in New Zealand, so around 110, I think. 110 is the maximum, you know, speed limit uh, on one road down there. And one time I was going toward uh, the south, and you could see a vehicle driving maybe at a speed of 130. Although the speed limit is there, but people purposely 
they decide to go fast. Then they passed us. They, they, they overtook us. 20 minutes later, we reach a place and we see them again there. The traffic slowed them down. Meaning that you can go <coughs> extremely fast. It does not necessarily mean that you reach there before. But if the police catches you, then there is a consequence. Sometimes we decide to break the rules <coughs> for no reason. <coughs> Believing that if I do this, then I can be there on time. But wherever you go, there is a speed limit, and you may end up reach the same destination with others. But please do not break the rules. Do you know the rules of God into your life? That's the will of God. The rules that God has given to you are what you are calling the will of God for you. So what is the will of God for you? The Bible says it clearly in John chapter 3, 16. He doesn't want to see anyone perish. He wants to see all of us saved to be in his kingdom. But we choose not to enter the kingdom of God. We decide to go in a direction where we perish. When you drive without following your own, the road code, you may end up to have an accident. And that accident won't be good. Yesterday after eating fish of my brother, he didn't say much, but I don't know what was going on in his mind. I was trying to observe him, or in his heart, I don't know. He ate what was there, but he went back. And he picked up another piece of fish. And he ate. I, pull, I took back that head and I put it on her his plate. <laughs> she didn't touch it, she didn't eat it. The world can sometimes, you know, destroy your comfort. The world can sometimes come and step into your life, in your plate, I should even say and make it to look yuck, you know? To look like, you know, if someone, you know, ate something and put the leftovers on your plate, you feel like, you know, I'm not eating this anymore. You will even go back and change your plate. And I was expecting my brother to do so, but he didn't. He continued to eat the rest. When someone hurt you or destroy your peace, how do you react? You blow up everything, or do you just continue your life as a normal Christian and ignore that bad pressure which has come from that bad corner? When someone steals something from you, how is your reaction? Do you become angry or not? And the blind spot in your life is when you are a Christian. I'm also a Christian. It's when you cannot control things. When you lose control, you forget the presence of Jesus Christ. Then something happens and you hit it. Self-control is very, very important. When someone comes from any corner, you stop yourself. Snap your breath. Of course, your heart will beat up fast. You feel like boom, boom, boom in your heart. It's like, oh, I could kill someone here. Normally, when someone hurts your feelings, you become angry, you know, feel like, and you call on yourself. And mom used to tell me, when someone hurts you like that, close your eyes. That's the answer for my mom. Close your eyes. That's the first thing. After closing your eyes, shut up your mouth. Because if you open your mouth, then you will explode. If you open your eyes, then you'll find anything to attack back. And thirdly, she will tell you, your ears also should be. Because people will comment, oh, Tarone, you know, angels saying, was saying such and such against you. 
Oh, and you know, I was with Korea. She told me this, this, and this about you or against you. Leah, you know, when I passed there, someone was talking about you. How will you feel? If just someone comes to you and telling you someone was talking about you, what would be your first reaction? What was that person saying to you? You try to, to learn more. Oh, I can't tell you it was so bad. Oh, really? What did I do? You know, you start to ask yourself questions because you listen. And those questions will push you to go to make a decision. And that decision, of course, may not be a good one. Although a bus is stopping on your right side, please don't go with a high speed. Make sure that you are walking by faith. Anything can come out from here. But by faith, I know that I will escape it. Or again, God will protect me. Slow down when it's time to slow down. Don't rush. Even if someone is telling you something which is, you know, huge, do not rush. Take your time. Ask Jesus. Please, Jesus, lead me. Jesus, lead me. Because by myself, I can't do it. And uh, finally, I will tell you that uh, in uh, Colossians chapter 4, verse 5, I think. It says that you have to walk wisely or we have to to live you know as people of God's wisdom towards strangers or outsiders when you meet with people that do not you they don't know you at all when you're among those that you know they don't know if you're a Christian or not do you really behave as a wise person because for, for God, wisdom comes from somewhere. Do you know where? Where did he get wisdom from, according to the Bible? Mm -hmm. Bible. Yeah, wisdom comes from God. And it's a blessing to be children of God because he gives to us that wisdom. So we have now to walk as wise people. When we see strangers, when you go somewhere where mommy is not there, mommy is not there, friends are not there, Christians are not there, how do you behave like? Do you also do what they are doing? Or do you help them to understand that their type of lives are not the lives which pleases to God? One time I spoke to one of our boys. So, Tell me, have you tried to drink alcohol? He was like, mm, yes. Oh, really? Why? Oh, I don't know. Just friends gave to me and said, look, try. And I drank it. And how did you feel after that? Oh, it wasn't good. In my house, he couldn't do that, ever. Even he won't even find alcohol in that house. But when he went outside to meet with outsiders, People that we do not know, people who did not also know that he was a believer, they offered to him something. I can tell you that Satan is our enemy. And very often he targets us when we are outside, very often, when we are outside of those that we call Christians. You can be at work. And at work, you will see people talking against eternal life. You will also participate. They can talk against, you know, anything. They can suggest even, propose to you sins. Because the sin is now normal, actually, you will also participate. God is asking us to walk wisely. And what is wisdom for you? It's just a matter of knowing to decide what is right. And what is wrong? Then I choose what is right. I was given meat to eat food. And I was also given vegetables. And 
this person told me, which one do you prefer to eat? Meat was really well cooked, and vegetables was, you know, just normal veggies. And I was like, uh, I'll go for meat. Ah, meat. Why do you choose meat? Because it tastes really good, you know, compared to veggies. Salad is just, you know. And then, after eating, he said to me, look, your choice was good to please your, to your mouth, your taste. But if we go now deep in relation to your health, vegetable was more important for you than your meat. Very often, we limit ourselves to the taste, you know. This is what you call fashion. This is what the world has been going through. We have to look like them. Because if I don't do like them, I will look different. And of course we are different because we don't belong to this world. It's not because, uh, let me say, Chris Brown or Shakira will uh, wear something, I must also wear it. Because Shakira dances like that, I have also to do so. I will look foolish, you know, on God's eyes. So I have to tell myself, you know, this is what God wants. And this is what the world wants. What I'm doing now, am I pleasing to God or not? Our old brother who passed away, he wanted to be buried, maybe around 70 kilometers away from the city. Because uh, in that area, we believe that, you know, spirits of the, our village lives there. He wants also to be buried under that mountain. It's like a Maori's with their place, you know, their cemetery there. We have a similar, you know, cultures with them. And it was like, you know, he's dead, he's gone. And his body will never say no, you know. We can put it anywhere, it will be okay. Instead of taking it there, because he believed that one day, his spirit also will start to help people. Those will come there to adore or to ask for help under that mountain, they will get the power from his spirit and they can survive. What a belief. So for those who went there, I told Oscar, look, put that aside. We have to change the things. We have to tell them, if we do not, then they won't do it. So we instructed them, instead of there, take him somewhere else, put his body somewhere else. Oh, but he said, if he will die one day, this is where we should bury him. Forget about that, put him somewhere else. <laughs> then we sent those young person to go there earlier to prepare the place. So when the family comes with the body, they found that they prepared the wrong place. And there was no time to start to dig again. Very okay. So they put the body there. And they went back home. Meaning that at some time, when our brothers, sisters, friends, or colleagues, whenever they are wrong, we can also try to help them. Don't be ashamed of your faith or belief. Please, you have eyes, use your eyes to see. God has been presenting in front of us everyday situation. Everyday situation. We see what has been happening. But our time on the earth is very short. Very soon Jesus is coming back. He won't wait for Hannah to be 99 years old, or 600 years, or Leah to become maybe 79, or maybe Eden to become 106. No. At any minute, from now on, he can come back. Are we wise or not? We can be believers, but if we are not wise, he will never and ever take us. Remember the story of those ten virgins. If you are not among the wise one, you will stay behind. And it will be a shame to hear people like us one day telling Jesus, I've been working for you. I used to pray every time. I used to do this and that for you. And Jesus will tell you, I'm sorry. Go away. I don't know you. Please be wise. For that reason, I will encourage you, in your prayers, tell God every time, 
like Solomon. I don't need money, but I need wisdom. I do not need, you know, nice clothes. I need wisdom. I do not need maybe a big car or a wonderful house. What I need, first of all, is wisdom. Once you get wisdom, you will get more. But if you don't have wisdom and they give you everything you need, then you look foolish. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, because you are God. Please, Jesus, help us to become wise. Wisdom comes from you, nowhere else. Bless us with that gift. Bless us with wisdom from heaven. So we can know how to distinguish wrong to good. We can know how to please to you. We can know how to walk in this world. We can know how to supervise, to control, to support, and to do your will. We are weak, and we need your support and help, Lord. Give us a faith, faith that will help us to walk in the right direction. Because we don't see a lot of things coming from different corners. Protect us against Satan and any type of temptation. Make us winners every time. And also, victory will follow us, our children and our next generation. Bless this family, bless this house, which is your church. Bless every single who is present here. And Lord, let your blessings continue to be seen all of our lives, all of our family members. And those who are misconducting themselves, those who are far away from you, Lord, bring them back. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.